Hello and welcome to interior add-on video. As we can see that we have a nice building uh, for an office building it seems and uh, I actually downloaded it from 3D Warehouse. So you can see that it's quite dark and there is no interesting details about the building so let's place a room grid first and let's face it just have a slight preview of what we are going to do and we just scale the room so the flooring does look correct so let's add some floors here you go we can scale it a little bit down so it matches then we can increase some rooms we are almost ready let's apply a theme and see what will happen okay that's really good start but I guess that we need a little tent so let's get a blue tent for the building just to decrease the saturation a little bit I like that blue okay and we can just give it a random tenting so it gives some kind of you know a variation and we will turn off some rooms here you go <laughs> very quick right so we can just go to other facade rotate have this place it like that just to drag it inside a little bit increase the number of rooms we may scale it a little bit in the y-axis and here you go you can see how fast it is to create and populate 3d rooms in just a few seconds so how we can install this add-on and how we can use it first things first let's learn how to install the add-on we will go to preferences of course add-ons install and go to the folder where you have downloaded your add-on just to keep the icons bigger so we can understand what we do have here by default you'll have interior 1.0 and interior pack maybe in the future you will have multiple zip files so you might get introduced to interior residential pack interior office pack and so on also you may have a third party pack so you can have evermotion osl for example right now it's fully compatible with interior add-on so let's just install the add-on first and it will be just installed in a second so we enable the add-on and we will find some preferences import packs and assign interior to blender asset library so let's import packs first let's go to where we have downloaded our files so you will find the interior pack import packs okay it finished installing so let's go to interior add-on you will find it in end panel and you will find it below where the last uh, add-on to be activated will be placed at the end so you will find this panel if we imported third-party packs you might get introduced to two other panels like evermotion so let's install evermotion osl packs once it's finished you will find that evermotion panel is being revealed so you can have your assets from evermotion and also interior pack which will be updated periodically and you will have more shaders on the line so let's assign interior to blender asset library when you check this you will find interior and here you go you can drag any kind of shader you like from your installed packs so let's just turn on the render viewport and you will find that these assets are working just right away drag and drop and everything will work as intended so how I can use interior add-on you can add any mesh you want so let's have a cube for example so let's add a night residential here you go that's it it applies to any mesh let's try Susan 
view and you have <laughs> the rooms in each polygon as you can see so you have the parallax monkey and also parallax cube let's see some other features but let's go to cycles because we may get introduced to more features that are enabled in cycles it's compatible with ev but you might have some functions that are not working like uh, random tint and random intensity maybe in next version maybe the after next who knows uh, but for ev you can have all these kind of functions working as you need the room grid is a good start for your interior add-on especially for the big facades you might need something like the room grid so what it does it just gives you a grid that has some controls so you can control widths control height control rooms control floors and also module so let's see what will this do in action so let's have residential and go for medium for example and large and you will have all your shaders just activated as you can see uh, according to the nearest or to the closest area possible that suits this shader so once you go to small for example you will have a different variety once you go to large it will give you these kind of shaders that does have like two pieces also you do have this rooms and floors what's awesome about them that you can create literally thousands of room in just a flick here it is you have <laughs> like 20,000 rooms right now if 200 by 200 that's 40,000 can you imagine the number and the count and you can see that how quick the response and feedback of the viewport is so this is the power of this add-on you can literally add thousands of rooms without any problem these controls are intended to give you some kind of variation for your shaders above their variation so the first thing you will have is random shaders once you disable it it will give you just one shader and you can switch between the shaders by flicking here uh, sliding here or you can just click uh, and see which shader that you want so it's better to have like one by one select shaders like that and you flick again you may go to medium size click and you go to other shader and so on you can select your shader and that's it the light color is a changing color which is introduced in the first version or the early access but now you do have random tint random tint just breaks light colors to different colors you can go to the negative side or the positive side whatever you like you want some coolness you want some kind of warmness uh, it depends on the colors that you have selected here so you can go for blue for example and to try to keep the random tint a little bit below so it will give you that kind of random blue or you can go to the other side which will give you some warmth uh, but it, it might get a little bit creepy but it's really impressive in terms of artistic approach that you can just go all the way around and you will have this kind of variation of the colors so you can just decrease the saturation slightly so you can have a reasonable effect the next function is emission well it's it's introduced in the first version but now you have random intensity random intensity gives you this kind of realistic look of how rooms act in real life most people doesn't light the whole lights so you, you might have some kind of variation in lighting in general so that will give you that effect but the best part is this will give you some kind of a smooth animation for lights off lights on feature so you will have this effect also you do have saturations and of course lastly the seat you will have 2d curtains by default but some people may ask why i do have a 2d curtains uh, because you know it saves a lot of memory but sometimes you have 3d curtains already so you love them and you want to keep them you just want the room so you can turn off the front element why i called it front element and not curtains because in some shaders especially for um, retail 
you might find a sale wording or something on the storefront so this will be a front element and you have here also right side and left side let's go and see the quick tools in some detail so let's remove this room grid and they have a room grid again so this room grid is what we have seen at the beginning it has controls it has really nice functions that you might need to have a quick setup for your facade what's about the interior control so you might have all these to be joined in one mesh and then apply interior control to them that will give you the control that you have for interior geometry nodes so it will just apply the attributes that you might change for these shaders so you can change the color for example you can change the random tint you can change emission and so on everything is here as this plane but this is of course for specific shaders as you can see here of course if you want to have a shader a specific setting so for example you want some kind of room that doesn't have this light color so you can separate that very easily uh like that and you can play with this setting just isolated so that facilitates the control for your asset library items now the join room grid function so if you want to join two similar room grids like you have another copy and you have rotated it for example but you want this to be just one object you don't want uh, have the rooms to be the same for example so you can select these and join the room grids and they will act like that. So it will work just fine and it will randomize across this room grid. So it has to be room grid or it has to be an object that does have the same Z. What if I want to join these room grids like that and then I want to join these room grids with those. So here you have to apply like that and then join the active so this is why the apply button is here sometimes something wrong happens especially with the varied faces let's have an object that has a, always a problem with that so let's just have a night residential and you will find this problem so how we can solve that we actually do have a uv rotate with a click you can just click few times and you will have your rotation 90 degrees it actually rotates the textures in object mode so i guess it is very very nice to have uh, kind of this uh, quick uv editing while on the go next we have the low risk and high risk functions so if you clicked on low risk what it does it gives you the low resolution version so you can see here that these textures are slightly blurry right now so if we have a higher resolution version let's try low resolution again here it is very blurry high res it is really cool so this does save you tons of memory if you are planning it to have these parallax in a city or in a game remove interior assets it does what it says it actually removes anything related to interior almost from the file so it all disappeared right now as you can see and don't worry this action is undoable so you can control z and you will have everything intact next you have relink interior if you have this file just finished and everything and you have another computer or a laptop that you want to install the add-on on so you do have relink interior function and finally you have localize all this button is intended for packing all the shaders and everything related to interior so even if you have other links it will be packed as well so you have to be careful while using this button because your file will be gigantic and now for the candy ever motion interior panel this panel does have really impressive stuff why because you do have 90 different materials 90 shaders for lobby and also you have office which is 15 and 15 and showcase 15 and 15 really valuable let's have a room grid and test out interior packages 
so let's go to lobby because it is the largest one and it does have really impressive variety because it does have three sizes for each room so if you have 15 variations you have 15 by 3 which is a 45 and 45 nights and 45 days so you have 90 shaders in lobby package only so it is really crazy and uh, it does have really impressive designs the best thing about evermotion interior uh, it does have two different categories other than interior pack small medium large modules because these are uh, slightly different or <laughs> quite different it does have a different height let's try office let's try the medium size module let's try the large one yeah <laughs> so for the office you have also awesome variations you can have day showcase and you can also select between small medium and of course large and you will find also low risk and high risk functions and that's all folks thank you for watching and i hope that you have purchased the interior add-on that will be the best investment for your art this and also your games because you can use the blender game engine to release games with it so this will work perfectly fine and a special thanks for Evermotion to support the add-on and see you next time.